Hai ni lima. Kurang kurang kau kerjut. Princeton, manual first year. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. So prepare that on this next paper, right? Yes, yes. Uh, I wanted to fit in the time. Okay. More people will be joining. Let us see. I think so. Okay. So did you find this topic interesting? Uh, yes, yes, I've never seen this before. So. Especially the, the geometry, the, the same side, yeah. Maybe you can start share the slides. Okay. Okay. I'm planning to just write lives. Maybe I have to make you co-host. Recording.
Uh, you can see the screen? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, let me know when to start. Are you going to start? Okay. I think three minutes already passed. Right, right. Okay, so let's begin then. So today I'll be talking about this paper that um, was suggested to me by Schneps. Uh, and it's called um, the same time fan on the sphere. Uh, right. So um, recall in in the last talk, um, we saw how. this action of the Galois group on their scenes was faithful. And um, today I want to, one of the things I want to do is, um, let's, uh, okay. Uh, let's discuss a proof of an analogous result for trees. And the, um, the technique is basically based on Bailey's theorem's proof, which um, is also explained in Schnepp's paper, but I won't cover that today. Um, and it's due to these two people, uh, Lenstra and um, me. Okay, so what is the result? The result is that this action of the Galois group on trees is faithful. Um, right. And just to recall what we mean by planar trees, uh, these are just genus zero decimals. Okay, and um, so how do we prove this? We need uh, two technical lemmas, at least the way these two people thought about it. So let's state those. So the first technical lemma Okay, so this is purely algebraic. So you have a polynomial f, uh, degree of f is n, and uh, d is some number dividing n. And suppose h is some other, other polynomial um, such that it satisfies some properties. So you have h gives zero um, at zero, it's monic and degree dividing f. So degree of h is d, which we saw divides um, the degree of f. And then uh, we also have, um, there exists some uh, polynomial g, such that if you compose with h, you get f. So F is uh, G composed H. Um, and the claim is that if you have such a uh, nice polynomial H, then H must be unique. Um, this is not too hard to see. Um, so you just do it by brute force uh, in the sense, so uh, let's say that uh, G is a polynomial of degree m. So by the composition, we have degree of f is the product of the degrees of g and h. And so if you write g as um, this degree m polynomial, a m z m plus a naught and h as some degree d polynomial, um, recall it's monic, which is why we have this nice condition, then f will be a m hm plus a naught 
and now um, the observation is that observe m minus 1 times d is um, which is basically n minus uh, d so it's less than n minus d plus 1 and um, so the terms of degree greater than or equal to n minus d plus 1 so uh, that is n minus d plus 1 up till n uh, are all this is on the left side is sorry what the question d? Uh, what is the question no g g is of degree capital m yes and h is of degree d correct and we are writing or f is or f is another polynomial Yes, f is uh, equal to g composed with h. So it's another polynomial of degree m. I see. No. Okay. I, okay. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Right. So f recall is g composed h. And so all the terms of degree bigger than n minus d um, that appear in f all will come from a M H M, um, and so using this, we can solve for uh, the coefficients of H H one up till H D minus one, uh, just from this equation, and then um, for the other terms, so for n minus d plus 1 less than e less than n minus 1 um, we do similar sort of algebra so we observe that the term of hn of degree e um, is going to be a polynomial in these um, in the coefficients h e minus n plus d e minus n plus d plus 1 up to hd minus 1. And so we can recover. Um, the, the point is that the key is that we can recover h completely. And so it must be unique. Uh, so that's the first lemma. Feel free to interrupt me if there's questions. And then we have lemma 2 the second technical lemma. Um, this is uh, right. also an algebraic statement. So you have g, h, and g twiddle, h twiddle are polynomials uh, such that the compositions are equal. And uh, the degrees of the h's are the same. Then there's a nice relationship. So there must be constants C and D such that you can write H twiddle as C H plus D. Okay. Um, so how does one prove this? Um, again, the proof is not too hard. So um, we basically do some uh, substitutions and reduce to the first lemma. So you write L and L twiddle for the leading coefficients of your polynomials H and H twiddle. Okay. And then um, respectively and write c and c twiddle for the constant terms but not of h and h twiddle now we want to look at the quotient and you'll see why we are doing this uh, because we basically want the same setting as lemma one and so if we do this then there exist polynomials g prime and g prime twiddle such that g composed h you can write as g prime composed h divided by l minus c and 
g twiddle composed h twiddle is g prime twiddle h twiddle mod l minus c and now we have what we want so we simply apply um, technical lemma one to your polynomials h l minus c and and this polynomial and then this uh, basically gives you what you want uh, because we have that they are uh, we have uniqueness and so we can find constants and compare them okay any questions about this if not we can discuss the proof of the faithfulness of action okay great so the strategy here the meeting still on okay so what we want is for every element of your galois group what we will do is we'll show there's a tree such that um, sigma acts on it non-trivially which would imply the action is faithful um so some preliminaries you have k is a number field and uh, d in k is some primitive element um, such that sigma is acting on d non-trivially um okay so we have this and now the the key here is to construct such a tree on which your permutation uh, sigma acts non-trivially it's enough to show there's a tree over k exists such a tree over k um and to do this we can show that there's a bailey function beta that corresponds to this tree over k such that beta sigma z is not beta a z plus b c z plus d where unless you have uh, z is equal to a z plus b um right okay how it comes from very theorem large statement I think we use the correspondence you know, for this okay. between decins and uh, Bailey functions. Okay, for a decin, there would be a Bailey function. Right. And this last okay. relation, beta over sigma, is it not equal to beta? Uh, so that would mean that sigma acts non trivially on the tree. Um, because if it acted trivially on the tree, then this would have to, uh, this equality would have to hold. Again, by the, uh, the correspondence. Right. So these trees are also the set upon, right? Yeah. Trees, yes. So the corresponding to them, there are some subgroups of the triangle groups. Mm -hmm. And those groups must be having a lot of torsion. It seems like that. If the 
the cell the phase mm -hmm. the essence of gene zero is defined in the tree the essence of gene zero right yeah in yeah. the gene zero but there are no uh, annulus or other things no trees of gene zero that means trees embedded planetary planetary yeah. Yeah. yes planetary yes and the uh, so this theorem is for planetary or what you are proving or where, where, yes this is where did I, you use planarity where did i use planarity that's a good question um actually you haven't proved you think maybe you can no no i think that so the model of this and giving the strong torsion and closing it up mm -hmm. not putting any handles mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay, let's so, go ahead. Yeah. So the question is if this works for any uh for is this only for planar trees? Uh, no, if it is true for planar trees, it's already proved, theorem is proved. <laughs> right. So if you are allowing arbitrary trees, then so but planar tree just means that there is um, the cyclic order around these vertices. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what it amounts to. Any tree can be made into a planar tree. Right, right. And that only implies that uh, there is a cyclic order along the vertices of valence greater than or equal to two, uh, greater than mm -hmm. or equal to three, let us say. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, okay. Right, so we want to produce this um, function. And um, um, we can do this. Uh, so we'll show. If beta sigma z is beta a z plus b c z plus b for such a uh, polynomial, then um, then c is zero. And sorry, was there a question? No. Okay. No. No. And d is one. Um, and this just follows because um, beta to the sigma is also a polynomial. And right, so th this, yeah, I, I won't show this, but we can observe. Um, and so we can just, um, this is up to replacing a um, and b by a over d and b over d and um, right and so what we'll do is we will um, reduce uh, polynomial beta z over k um, such that if uh, beta sigma is beta of a z plus b now that c and d are dealt with um, then a must be 1 and b must be 0 okay so let's do this explicit construction so we begin with uh, a polynomial f alpha inside of k of z uh, such that it has this strange condition on the derivative. So this is uh, z cubed, z minus 1 square, z minus alpha. And then um, this is 
I'll leave as an exercise, but you can show this um, right. This trick is used um, in the proof of Bailey's theorem, but you can show that there is a polynomial f uh, over q uh, such that f composed f alpha is a Bailey polynomial. Um, and let's call that g alpha. Okay, so we now have a Bailey polynomial. And from here, um, we want to now use the two technical lemmas. So let's take beta to be um, alpha to the sigma. Um, and note beta is not equal to alpha. Did I? Right. Okay. Um, so now, we have f of z is in qz, right? Uh, by construction. So we have another Bailey polynomial given by G beta, which is F composed F beta. Um, and F beta here is just F alpha sigma. Okay. So now we have um, G alpha and we have G beta. Okay. So what do we do next? Um, right. We are almost ready to apply the lemma. So so now let's look at um, the tree corresponding to your uh, Bailey polynomial G alpha and call it T alpha and similarly T beta corresponding to G beta. Okay. And um, we have T beta is um, equal to T alpha sigma just by the construction of the Bailey polynomials. And um, the claim is going to be that sigma acts non-trivially on this tree T alpha. So we want to show that T beta and T alpha are distinct. And this is equivalent to showing that G beta of Z is not equal to G alpha of A Z plus B for constants A and B. Okay, so suppose if not, we had suppose um, G beta Z was equal to G alpha. Az plus b. Then what goes wrong? Well, uh, we do some compositions and apply the lemma. That's basically what we do now. So we have f of f beta z is equal to. This is just rewriting using the definitions of these uh, Bailey polynomials. And then um, from here, we may apply lemma two. Um, which will give us that there exist C and D such that F alpha AZ plus B 
is uh, C F beta Z plus D. So we apply lemma to, to um, G and G to the equals F and um, H and H to the um, uh, F alpha and F beta. Right. Um, H is F alpha, H to the is F beta. Okay, so this gives you this relation between the Fs. And now the idea is just um, get some contradiction. And to do that, we look at critical points on both sides. Um, they should be the same because we have an uh, equality. So um, the right hand side, we have the same critical points as F beta, that is uh, 0, 1, and alpha. And then the left hand side has three critical points. given by, let's say, x1, x2, x3, um, and each is of order i, say, each. Um, uh, OK. And Note that we also have this relation of the x size, namely ax1 plus uh, b is alpha, ax2 plus b is 1, and ax3 plus b is 0. Uh, because the transformation az plus b will take the three critical points on the left side to the three on the right. And if you look at the equality, you get um, x1 is beta, x2 is 1, and x3 is 0. Um, since az plus b takes critical points to critical points, but uh, right. And so you basically do some algebra, and if you solve the um, these equations, then you also get that a x two plus one is uh, plus b is one, and a x three plus b is zero. So a is one and b is zero, and a x ax1 plus b is, um, I think I wrote something wrong. Right, this should be ax2 plus b is 1, ax3 plus b is 0. Um, but uh, maybe I can skip the details. But if you solve, you, you also get. Um, beta equals alpha, which is, which contradicts the assumption made in the beginning. And so the point is that um, you can't have this equality of, um, of the Gs, which means that the trees are distinct. And um, this shows that T alpha and T beta are distinct, or in other words, T alpha and T alpha sigma are distinct. And so we found the uh, the required tree. Okay, questions about this? It's all the fine. What next? Uh, right, right. So. Um, so all we wanted to show was the action is faithful, right? So for every permutation, if we find a tree such that the action is uh, not trivial, then 
that that means it's feasible. So next, what do we want to do? Um, we'll talk. Uh, and about the, this. Cor the corresponding subgroups of the triangle groups mm -hmm. would have lots of torsion. Uh -huh. They they won't be torsion free. I see. Yeah. I if the tree is in the center of form, mm -hmm. then the corresponding subgroups of the triangle groups are have lots of torsion. Uh, it's generated by torsion. Yeah. And uh, that tells you the action is faithful? Uh, no, I think from... It's using the correspondences between different category of objects. Yeah, uh, the, that we have some... You already proved that it is faithful then. By the general correspondence, decimals uh, correspond to finite index of proof of triangle groups. So. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. That's good to know. Because correspond to trees, certainly the subgroups you get are some special groups. So what is special about them? Is is I think this is just. Uh, that they are generated by torsion. I see. Okay, okay, that's good to know. Uh, right. Anyways, so, but to continue, um, so uh, th this talk is one hour, right? Just to know how much time I have. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Okay, so we have time for this, right? So mm -hmm. let's quickly recall, just so I uh, don't use confusing notation. So we write a decine as this triple, where this is some nice um, topological space that it corresponds to some compact connected uh, Riemann surface, and then this is um, a finite collection of points and then you have that the differences are nice so x2 minus x1 is some disjoint union of open cells and x1 minus x0 is a disjoint union of segments okay um, and now we are going to specialize to x2 equals a sphere and um, Right, so the point is that, and we'll also use um, this notation to write um, the graph because we'll be using it a lot. Right, and so the, the goal is to find a decimal associated in the Bailey function beta of zero one um and then right so this is basically the explicit growth index correspondence in genus zero um i don't know if we'll have time to uh to find the uh, the, the other direction of bailey morphism from the decine but let's at least do this um so okay another reminder um a rational clean Bailey function. What do we mean by that? It's basically a morphism beta from a nice space to X such that all the critical points um, or the critical values is a better word. Um, are in the set of 0, 1, infinity, and um, that is, it's a Bailey map, and also um, the ramification orders over 1 are exactly 2. Um, 
right and so before we uh, do the construction let's talk about this picard's method so what does this do um so given a bailey covering beta from x to p1 c um so it's finite and ramified over zero one infinity um and then we'll uh we'll we have d is the degree of the cover let's say and then the the insight here is that we have two associated elements of the permutation group s sub d corresponding to this cover and um, there's ways to see this using the ramification but i think it also follows from this theorem uh, hopefully i'm citing it correctly but um right and so based on the time we have let's just write it out so given a uh, given such a x and a bailey cover we have sigma naught sigma one inside of sd such that um sigma one is a product of uh, d by two disjoint transpositions so two cycles and this subgroup generated by sigma naught sigma one is transitive um right And so now what we want is um, to construct the problem. So I want to introduce another permutation. Uh, and by the way, this works in the reverse direction as well. So every Bailey cover corresponds to such transpositions. Uh, so I want to define sigma infinity as this um, the subgroup sigma naught sigma one inverse and right so how do we construct um, the decile so drawing the decile um so we start by by writing a uh, sigma infinity as a product of cycles. So let's say it's S1 up to SL, the SIs are disjoint cycles. And then for each SI, you have a length of the cycle. Uh, so SJ um, has length KJ. And uh, each SJ, you can break down um, and explicitly write down its cycle elements as I1 up to IKJ. Okay, so now we have some notation and then we start drawing the decine. So for each SJ, we draw a kj gon um, and oriented counterclockwise um, and how do we label this so we label the kj gon uh 
with transpositions. I1 and then the action of sigma 1. Recall the I1, um, IJs are the cycle elements of SJ. So we have these transpositions, uh, I1 up to I, K, J, sigma 1 acting on I, K, J. So uh, to be precise, we label the edges of the KJ cone with these transpositions. And then recall we have um, L cycles in the decomposition of uh, sigma infinity. And so we have L kj, L number of uh, kj cons. And so we glue them together. And how do we glue them? Uh, we identify sides labeled uh, by same transpositions and uh, same direction. Um, and recall that by the construction of the sigma i, we have that each edge is identified with exactly another edge. This follows because um, now one square is one. Right, and so we have a nice gluing and, and what we get is, we get a nice surface, so we get a nice surface um, X prime and and we can draw uh, this name um, by identifying these edges and right and once we have this uh, nice surface we have we have a morphism data from the surface x prime to p1c and um, right and and this follows by by making some um, markings on your decine and um, and doing some identifications. Um, essentially what you do is, um, so you, you have your surface and then you, um, after you make markings, you just um, identify things with, zero one and infinity and and you can see that uh, there is such a morphism um, and and one can also see that um, this beta from x prime to p one c has um, the same properties as your, um, maybe we can call it beta prime, x to p1c. And so the surface you get is actually x. This is up to homeomorphism. Um, right, maybe I can say a little bit about the identification. Um, 
right so we look at triangles and label the with uh, with three symbols any three symbols you want um, and and then um, right you just uh, basically join the appropriate vertices and then you um, you get something homeomorphic um, to the sphere. Uh, so it's a very geometric construction. And then at the end, you identify star with one and um, this with zero and this with infinity. And you check that the ramification orders are what you expect. Okay. Um, but but the idea here is basically to uh, to find these transpositions that correspond to the uh, to the Bailey map. Once we have the transpositions, then we just use the cycle structure to to build the DESI. Okay. So that is uh, Picard's method, but we want to apply it now. Um, to construct these permutations. So, right. So we want, uh, what do we have? Why it is called Picard method? Uh, I'm not sure why it's called Picard's method, but that's what Schnepp cited it as. Okay. Picard is, is the great Picard of the 19th century? Same. I think, I don't know any other Picard. <laughs> oh. Yeah. It's probably him, but uh, yeah, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, right. And so going back to uh, constructing the the scene corresponding to uh, rational in okay, just to just to repeat your statement then that in uh -huh. general you need a triangle group uh, lm infinity let us say mm -hmm. then you can actually make it 2m infinity is that right 2m in general, you need a triangle, triangle group L, M, N. Mm -hmm. That's the final your compact version. Mm -hmm. Now, making those uh, cusps, you can make something infinity. Replacing the compact Riemann surface by an open Riemann surface, but with cusps. Right. Uh, Right. So you can make one of those ramifications as infinity. Yes. And you are saying that of the remaining two ramifications, you can make one as two. Yes, the corresponding to one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, right. So going back to this construction, so we have this special case. And we want to understand in this special case, how do we build the DESI? So we want to use Picard's method and we want to build these um, permutations, sigma i. Um, and I think it's good to look at the explicit construction of sigma naught, sigma one, sigma infinity. Um, in, in this case, and once we have that, then we are almost done with, uh, because the same method applies. Right, so how do we proceed in this special case? So we have this map uh, P1C to P1C. It's a rational Queen-Bailey function. Let's say the degree is 2D. 
and then we have a little bit of notation. So we define AI to be a collection of three images of I for I inside of a big I. And then um, we have open sets. Uh, U alpha such that alpha is in the union of the AIs. And each U alpha is a neighborhood of alpha. And we also have these sets VIs, which are a union of beta of U alphas for alpha in AI for every I and I. Um, right. And each VI is a neighborhood. Um, is of um, of i in i. So v1 is a neighborhood of 0, v, uh, v0, v1, v infinity are neighborhoods of 0, 1, and infinity. Okay, and uh, we may assume that we choose the sets to be close enough so that the distance is, um, uh, the distance is positive. We choose them uh, separately. Okay. And um, D is the normal distance uh, in projective space. And uh, that's all. Okay, so that's the notation we need. And then we'll define these two sets. So we'll define X to be the difference of um, P1, C with these union of the neighborhoods. So we take away all the u alphas. Uh, we want to avoid the, the uh, that area. Okay, and then we define y. You take away all the v's. Okay, great. And so, how do we construct the permutations corresponding to the special Bailey map? So we pick a base point. Right, so pick x0 in y, and then let x1, xd be equal to a pre-image, and then let gamma0 be a loop. Uh, we start at x0, and then you go clockwise uh, once around 0. Gamma1 is defined similarly. Okay, and then we look at the pullbacks of these. So we look at beta inverse of gamma naught. Um, and one can see by looking at the degree of the covering and such things that this comprises 2D non-intersecting paths. Call them uh, G, G1 to G2D inside of X. And um, where GI will begin at, at some XI and ends at some XJ, where the notation is intentional. The Xs are in the pre-image of X0. And uh, no to GI end at the same point because they are non-intersecting. And now we are ready to write down the permutation. So the induced permutation inside of S sub D, uh, what does it do? It basically maps some index 1 to 2D to some index uh, um, 1. Maybe I should have 2D axis. OK, this is a notational error. Um, to some index 1 to 2D. And um, how is this? Uh, being produced. This comes from some paths sending, or uh, I guess, uh, going from xj to xk. So there's a very natural permutation. And then we call this element of s to d sigma naught. And if we do the same thing for um, the uh, loop we constructed um, 
gamma one. Then um, we get a, a permutation sigma one in S two D. And then um, essentially what you do after this is um, you explicitly so we just gave a method to construct it, but we want to explicitly determine um, these uh, pre-image, the entire pre-image of gamma naught and gamma one, because that's how we constructed this, uh, the X size, and the X size give you the permutation. So we compute the entire pre-image of gamma naught, gamma one, to get sigma naught, sigma one. And then the last step you, apply Picard's method and right and there is uh, one technical lemma that you also need but uh, it's not that important the, the key is to to build these permutations and from the permutations you build the decimal okay i see that it's uh, almost time so i i don't know if it's a good idea to continue speaking. But um, yeah, I, I think at least we managed to cover one side of the story. So uh, are there questions? So what we achieved after this? Right, so after this, uh, we, 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 didn't, uh, we didn't do anything really. We just um, discussed the um, the special case of uh, your map from P1C to P1C and then how to build um, the DESI in that case, corresponding to that map. Hmm. Right. So are you following any particular book in, for this? Uh, no, I just used um, um, Leila Schnepp's paper on DESI and fund. I can send the link if uh, anyone wants, yeah. Okay, that's great. Yeah, it's a very nice paper. You read that book, right? It is, paper in a it is a paper in a proceeding. Oh, right, right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, which proceeding was, was it? The the LMS. This is the farm. The proceeding name is this is the farm, 1994. Uh, I okay. will share with someone. And maybe post on web page. Oh, okay. okay. So they wrote three, four volume proceedings. The different papers. Proceedings of different contributors. So there is Snaps. Uh, one paper. One paper and Snaps is editor also. Snaps is editor of those proceedings also and contributor of also. Okay, then thanks and good. Thank you. <laughs> it was a, so yeah, thank uh, you. how about some examples of something? <laughs> examples. I'm scared to draw pictures. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the examples you yeah. You have to be really yeah, besides the generalities to work out examples is very hard. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think in the, the third section of the paper, she talks about uh, Grobner basis algorithm. That's more... Uh, Grobner basis, I see. Yeah, it's right. Ah. That's right. Ah, how long is the paper? I think it's 30 pages. Oh, it's in 20 pages. Okay, thank you. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Would you like this to be posted on YouTube? Uh, sure, if people want, uh, it would help them. Yeah. yeah, it would help people and it would help the school also. But okay. check, check why is it called Picard's method? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, yeah it I will, I will find. I mean, uh, <laughs> what was Picard doing with polynomials? So. Right, uh, it's very strange. <laughs> then not yeah. strange. I think they, they were giants. They knew the connections. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Other questions? I think no other questions. And uh, maybe see you next year in second trimester. Yes, definitely.
thank you so much yeah it was uh, right. fun thank you thank you thank you take care bye <laughs> thank you Sagar Kalani. Hi, sir. Ah, send me your phone number. Or okay, I, okay. I will send I will, you. I will try. I will talk to you. Yes. Okay, okay. I will send you. Bye. Yes. Thank you. Okay.